Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a blessed day that the Lord has granted us. We are so glad to have this beautiful opportunity. And um, we are going to grow in this day because it's a wonderful day that the Lord has created for us. And ever since the resurrection took place, we're still enjoying ourselves in this day which is still going on and it's a new day until the appearance the glorious appearance of our lord jesus christ was still in that day glory to jesus forevermore we are looking into something very important paul is talking about what happened to him the mindset changing the whole world crumbling before him and gaining a different perception and experiences that changed his life forever. And we're seeing that what you perceive is what um, determines your experiences in life because it's important, brothers and sisters. And chapter uh, chapter uh, 3 of the book of Ephesians, it talks about in verse 9 and says, and be found in him. So I talked about and be found in him because Paul was saying that I found myself in him, which caused everything that I thought uh, of importance, you know, uh, changing right away before me. Um, in my perception, in my experiences, in what I, I everything changed. You see what he's talking about? Everything changed. And that's so, so beautiful. So, so amazing, brothers and sisters. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness. So now, Paul now adds something else. He says, when I found myself in him, I realized I should not have my own righteousness. Because in him, I found righteousness that was waiting for me. And I discovered that also righteousness was not about what I did or what I was supposed to do. I realized that the righteousness was that was found that is in Christ Jesus was his, the nature of God. And he says, my, my. So I found myself in him and not having my own righteousness. You know how liberating that was, according to Paul? You know how that was liberating, or do you know how that is liberating today? Because remembering the things he considered important, you had to have been uh, circumcised on the, on the eighth day, uh, he had to follow uh, the laws, and he was in this extreme uh, group of Pharisees that was very, very cruel. And uh, he had also some other, he had confidence in, his, in him being a Jew and uh, from the tribe of Benjamin, Israelite, and so on and so forth. Those are the things that was, you know, he had to perform, he had to, to convince the world. Oh, he had to do something to let to... To, to have even this sense of acceptance in himself. All right? But then when he found himself in Christ, he discovered, well, wait. So there's no righteousness. I'm not going to try to make myself righteous because there's already the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the righteousness of God is bigger and greater and comparable to what man considers righteousness. 
And so, in fact, as you have to look into the righteousness of God, you realize there's no righteousness in man. Man cannot have righteousness. He cannot be righteous. And I'm saying this comparing if you discovered the righteousness of God, you realize no, man cannot do this. It's beyond him. So how was his mind blown away when he saw that there is such a thing as the righteousness of God in him? In Christ Jesus. And that's why we, he was. He could now commune. He could fellowship with that righteousness. He was so liberated. He was so free because all his life had struggled to achieve, to attain to that kind of righteousness, which he never did. And because of encountering the righteousness of God, he was looking for in Christ. This, he said all things were like a loss to me. They were like a loss, my brothers and sisters, because something huge, something amazing, something special. I never knew this was possible. I never knew that this would be. I mean, it was like dreaming. All right, he was dreaming. You see, being in Christ Jesus is exactly that. The moment you awaken in him, you're like dreaming. Is this real? Is this true? It's exactly what it means to be in Canaan. Canaan mean that you're going to rest, but in the prophecies of the, our patriarchs, the patriarchs, they said it was a, uh, um, they received the word from God and God described it as a, as, a, as a country, as a city, as a land of milk and honey. And that was a combination. I was trying to describe, all right, the best taste that one can have. And so I was saying, if you are in Canaan, you will have the taste of milk and honey. So this is, again, remember that was uh, a promise, a promise, and it was um, pointing unto something greater than, than Canaan, than itself. And the true Canaan was in Christ Jesus. And that is to say that the moment people are awakened in the reality, to the reality of what it means to be in Him, they will taste milk and honey in their lives. And so the idea of milk and honey will not be a literal, will not be also in the minds of people. It will be the experience that they have on a daily basis, milk and honey. And this is the question again to ask, are you in Canaan? If you're in Canaan, are you tasting milk and honey? Okay, let me ref uh, rephrase this. Are you in Christ? All right, have you discovered that you're in him? And if you're in him, are you testing the best test ever in your life? Are you having the best test? Are you enjoying yourself there? Are you having a good time in him? Is Christ to you milk and honey? Oh my, my. This is the call. This is the desire. This is what we should focus on. This is what we need. This is what he wants us to know. This is it, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is amazing. Not having my own righteousness. I saying, you know how liberating that is? Oh, you are blessed when you perceive that. Koma, he says, which is from the Lord. So he's saying, man, it was this righteousness that I had to, I had to perform, try and do this and do that, in the, according to the law. I didn't know that there's this wonderful righteousness from God, which is not from the law. And did you know that after now, many people are not aware of a certain righteousness that is found in Christ Jesus, which is not of the law, because there was this righteousness of the law before Christ. Now that Christ has come, he is the giver of that righteousness as a gift. So we receive that gift from Jesus Christ as a, as, a, yes, as a gift. And we also discover that this is God's nature. All right. So what we receive from Jesus Christ cannot be found anywhere. And you cannot perform those things. You cannot perform to that level. You cannot attain it. All right. And so seeing what Paul is saying here is uh, he's saying, well, I didn't need to now try and draw from, 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 uh, from the law 
eh, to come to that righteousness that was required by God. But I found righteousness in him. But this is my submission to you. Though he discovered this righteousness in Christ Jesus, then he had to compare, all right, after discovering this, he compared it with the righteousness he knew. And he found out that the righteousness he knew out of Christ in the law was not the true righteousness that God was looking for. So the law couldn't offer the true righteousness the true righteousness was to be found in Christ Jesus alone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And again, do you know how liberating this is? When you find that you don't need to, to gate, to, to draw from the law, but rather you draw from Christ. You draw from him. You draw from who he is. Blessed Jesus. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. But, and then again, he compares my righteousness from the law. That is to say that when you are drawing or fetching or you are gating from the law, all right, that is to say that that is your own righteousness. The righteousness that's that was coming from the law was compared to your own righteousness, not God's righteousness. And remember, God is looking for his own righteousness. But men were so deep into their own righteousness, even when Jesus Christ has come, uh, came, they are still in there. They're not aware that there's this liberating truth that we have this free gift from Jesus. He says, the righteousness which is all right, uh, rather, he says, but what? But that which is through faith in Christ. So that is to say, because faith in Christ is to see yourself the way God sees you. That is the meaning of faith. That means you have faith. You can clearly see what God sees about you. So when you have that vision, that is to say that you are, you are, you have faith. So faith is not your own creation. Faith is not trying to do a set, certain things on your side to kind of uh, please God or respond to him and so on and so forth in a certain way that is different from, all right, what uh, he has ordained and what did he ordain. We examine ourselves if we, if we are in the faith by acknowledging that Christ is in us and we are in him. So that acknowledgement, the ability to see what is already there is what is called faith. So it's not your invention. You are not trying to create something here, being able to see what is already there. It's like already God is already there, right? God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. But you can live separately from that reality. But when you have realized that God is there, the ability to realize it, that's what is called faith. So faith is now the uh, ability to see what is already there. You are not putting it there. You're not creating it by your faith. Rather, you, by your faith, by faith, you will be able to perceive, to see, to know things that were there, but which you didn't know before. That's it. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's amazing, brothers and sisters, to have, to have a different perception, a different kind of understanding, because this will change your entire world. So I've seen people who want to see changes in their lives, and, you know, in the outside, and yet they are the same in the inside. If you want to see changes on the outside, your perception has to change. This is what Paul is presenting to us. And these are fundamentals that will bring about the change in your life. These things. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.